All right, so now let's move on to the other amino assay that we're going to discuss today, which is immunofluorescence or IF. And we're going to define IF as an amino assay used for the detection and localization of cellular proteins and other antigens by way of fluorescent labeled antibodies. And these are typically, or these are detected with a fluorescent microscope. All right, so just reiterating, IF can be performed on either cells or tissues. Those are the sample types. And the uses are to assess localization and determine endogenous expression levels of protein. But localization um, is, the, is, the, is the main application for IF. And similar to IHC, there are two main methods of detection, direct and indirect, where direct detection is a fluorochrome conjugated to a primary antibody and secondary antibody, respectively. So let's start the IF workflow discussion for the cell sample type. And the basic um, broad workflow for this is cell culture, cell fixation and permeabilization, blocking and washes, fluorescent antibody incubation and washes, and of course, counterstain and mounting. So let's go ahead and um, talk a little bit more about the cell workflow um, in a little bit more detail. Um, so we begin this process by adhering cells on cover slips in a multi-well. For example, here we show a six-well culture, uh, culture dish. Once the cells reach the desired confluency, the cells are washed and then fixed and permeabilized. Uh, the fixation of the cells uh, similar to what we saw with IHC. It's going to preserve the morphology, and it can be done with various types of fixatives. Most popular seem to be 100% cold methanol or paraformaldehyde. Um, and once again, the choice of, of fixative is going to depend on the antigen of interest and localization. Permeabilization can be done with methanol or non-ionic detergents such as Triton. And the permeabilization step is important because it removes cellular membrane lipids to allow large molecules, so in our case, antibodies, to enter the cells. Um, so if we didn't do this, the antibodies would not be able to enter the cell and you wouldn't be able to get your stain. Um, and both of these steps are essential to good IF staining, so it's important to have those parameters worked out. And our next step is to block to reduce background and nonspecific binding. And again, similar to IHC blocking, normal serum of the host of the secondary antibody and blocking buffer is, is a really good choice. And then finally, our last step is to stain and counter stain um, using the fluorescent conjugated um, antibodies. Um, so to start, the primary antibody will be chosen for the antigen of interest, and the secondary antibodies are chosen um, based on the primary antibody as well as um, the desired dye that you want, so the particular um, fluorescent color that you want. Uh, and unlike enzymatic reactions, as we saw in traditional IHC, we do, we do not need a chromogen. So in this case, the microscope being used will excite the dye chosen at a specific wavelength, and that same dye will emit light at a different wavelength. And this results in an image. And this example that you see here in this slide in step five in the image, this is our ZO1 antibody, and it's used as the primary. And we used our rabbit true block Fitzy, which produces a greenish color, um, that conjugated secondary antibody. And you can see if you look at the image, right, the green is the ZO1 protein, and the blue is representative of the counter stain. So the counter stain used in IF um, is a fluorescent counter stain. Most of the time it's going to be uh, either hoist or, or DAPI. And that will um, that'll target the nucleus. Right? So you can see the blue is the nuclei and then the green is the corresponding protein. The IF workflow for tissues is going to follow the exact methods from um, preparation to blocking, um, though without blocking for endogenous enzymes, since this method utilizes fluorescent dyes. Uh, the only difference in the antibody or in, um, staining step um, and counter staining step is that the antibody conjugates or amplification reagents or counter stains are going to be fluorescent and not enzymatic. Here's a broad depiction of the staining and counter staining on IF, of IF um, on tissues. Um, and so if we take a look at this image, we have our fixed tissue on the slide. We have our primary antibody recognizing our red circle, which is our antigen, our protein of interest. And then our secondary antibodies are conjugated with a green dye. Um, and then we counter stain with either hoist or, or DAPI. So the top image is our RFP antibody and our bottom, the bottom image is our uh, Robo-1 antibody. Um, so in the bottom, 
Um, you can see the robo anti-robo one is in mouse lung tissue. You see the green, so it recognized the antigen of interest. There's no counter stain here. So we wanted to show an example of that. So if you look at the top, um, this is our anti-RFP, and we see the blue DAPI um, as a counter stain throughout. In a previous slide, I mentioned that an advantage of um, IF is the ability to multiplex. And multiplexing allows you to target additional ant antigens in a cell or tissue sample, but simultaneously. And this, is, this can be achieved by choosing primary antibodies for additional targets and secondary antibodies that are conjugated to different colored dyes. Multiplex experiments, though, they, they do need some thorough experimental design. Um, but you have to make sure that the antibodies that you choose, the primary antibodies that you choose, and the secondary antibodies that you choose do not cross-react with each other or the tissue sample. And you also have to make sure that the dye colors that you choose, so based on the wavelengths for the fluorescent dyes that are conjugated to the antibodies, that they don't have much spectral overlap as well. Um, so you have to get that process together before you can actually do the experiment. But the resulting images that you get are can be quite beautiful, and, and they give you a fuller picture regarding the localization, the expression, and the com, uh, compartmentalization of the proteins of interest, because you can look at different um, compartments within the cell as well. Um, so in this slide, we have a multiplex image of a fixed cell. And since we didn't have any multiplex images to share, I used the Thermo Fisher cell staining tool to put one together for you. And as you can see, it has three different colors that target specific regions um, or antigens of interest. And so I chose um, to target alpha tubulin, which is part of the cytoskeleton with a green dye, um, the plasma membrane with a red dye, orange red dye, sorry, and then counterstained um, for the nucleus with DAPI. And so you can see those three different portions of the cell very well, very clearly. So this is an extremely useful method, and I think you'll find that a, that a large majority of your customers are doing multiplex reactions.